Yes, class. Am I audible? Nuha, Lina. So we had stopped at this point. Stress we had calculated. I hope I'm audible. Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay. So we had seen that stress is basically the deforming force per unit area. Now, I, as I told you, there are different types of deformations produced. So if there are different types of deformations produced, then there will be dif different types of stress produced. So we didn't see the types of stresses. Let's see the types of stress. First type of stress is known as the normal stress or the longitudinal stress. Normal stress or the longitudinal stress. This means, suppose this is area of cross section is this. This is a force here. This is making an angle 90 degree. Force is perpendicular. Or let's say here is a table. I have kept a block also. So normal reaction is upwards making an angle of again 90 degree. So all the forces which are acting perpendicularly. That's why longitudinal stress is also called as the normal stress. All right. So normal stress or the longitudinal stress, if the deforming force is applied normally to the surface of body, then applied force per unit area. This is known as stress. So longitudinal stress, what will be the difference that will come? Longitudinal stress is equal to perpendicular force per unit area. That's it. Here you have to remember that angle that will be made will always be 90 degrees. Theta will be 90 degrees. That's it. Now see, when we are talking about the length, the change that is produced over here is length. So when we, uh, whenever we are talking about length, length can increase also, length can decrease also. So if we are talking that the length increases when the force is being applied, suppose the rod is pulling, the force is pulling the rod downwards and the length is increasing. Then we say increment in the length of the body. Now the longitudinal stress is called as tensile stress. See here it's written also. Ten tensile stress. And if there's a decrement in the length in body, if there is a decrease in the length of the body in the direction of applied force, now the stress that is set up is known as the compressive stress. So this is the first type of stress which is known as the longitudinal stress. This is clear. Longitudinal stress from the, this, the all these are linked to each other. So the longitudinal stress is basically when the force is applied normally. This is clear? Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, nextly, we have tangential stress. Okay. Now, so here initially in the first case, this was the change in the length. Change in the length was produced. Then next we have tangential stress. Tangential uh, stress brings out the change in shape. This brings out the change in shape. This brings out the change in shape. All right. Now, the best example you can relate, as I told you earlier also in the previous class, that if you take a very heavy book, very, very heavy book, which has lots of pages in it, and if you apply a force on the upward surface of it, just like this, so you will see, the column will become, like, if the book is like this, book will become like this. The upper surface will shift. So same thing is occurring over here. So now the force is being applied parallel to the surface and there's a change in the shape that is being produced. So we call this type of stress, that is force per unit area as the tangential stress. So... Tangential stress is equal to parallel force per unit area. That's it. So, first one was change in length. Second one was change in volume. Third is uh, change in uh, shape. Third one is change in volume. Now, change in volume we have to find. Suppose there's a sphere. And on this sphere, forces are acting from all the directions perpendicular. So here also force is perpendicular. Here also force is acting perpendicularly, making an angle 90 degree to the surface. The way it was present in the case of longitude. But the difference is that their length was changing, increasing or decreasing, compressive or tensile. 
here the volume is decreasing. So you have the stress as volumetric stress. So volumetric stress is equal to, again, the perpendicular forces which are acting per unit area. So if the deforming force is applied perpendicularly on a body which changes its volume, then that deforming force produced per unit area is called volumetric stress. All right. When there's a change in volume, volumetric stress, change in shape, force parallel, tangential stress, and perpendicular force changing the length. If increasing the length, so this is, if this is increasing the length, so this will be tensile. If this is decreasing the length, so this is compressive. All right. Write down this. This you have written from the types of stresses you haven't. Write it down. Anything you want to ask in between, you can. So see, since there is not only a single type of deformity, that's why we have various types of stresses and further also you will see various types of quantities will be there.
now the next topic is strain so one we have completed that is stress stress was like pressure force per unit area si unit was also the same si unit was pascals only or newton per meter square now you have the topic strain so strain basically means whatever is the change in change that is being produced suppose that there is a change in length so the change here will be the dimension here will be length so what it's basically the ratio of the change in the dimension that is occurring by the original dimension that is present and dimension can be anything like volume is increasing or decreasing so dimension will be volume if length is increasing decreasing length will be the dimension over here so whatever dimensions are mentioned to you whatever dimensions are given to you that change that is occurring see in every case we had seen there was a change whether there was a change in angle there was a change in the length there was a change in volume every time there was a change produced why because we had deforming forces in our system so similarly here also you will be having deforming forces in your system deforming forces will produce a particular type of strain so the change the strain produces basically whatever is the change by the original which was present before the change occurred so strain is <laughs> change in dimension by the original dimension and see since in the numerator and denominator you will be having the same dimension if i am talking about length so change in length by original length if i am talking about volume change in volume by original volume so both the quantities have the same si unit in the numerator and denominator so they'll cancel each other okay so if you are asked to write about strain you will mention that this is a unitless quantity unitless quantity as well as this is dimensionless why because uh, you all have the lesson the first lesson there you have things related to units and dimensions so this can be related some questions are there mentioned quantities that are dimensionless but have unit like angle angle has a unit radian but it is dimensionless and if you are asked to write a quantity that is dimensionless also unitless also so you can mention strain you can relate this with your first lesson anyways so since there is not a single type of deformity there are numerous deformities present numerous stresses are there in your system so different different types of strain will also be there again when there is a change in length only only there is a change in length suppose this was a rod of length l it has increased its length to l dash there is a change in the length that is produced is delta l so longitudinal strain longitudinal strain means the dimension that is being changed is length so longitudinal strain longitudinal strain means the change in dimension is change in length so what did i tell you change in dimension by the original dimension so change in length by original length what is the change in length that has occurred initially it was just l now it is capital l so the change is this delta l which is the extra portion so this is delta l by original length original length is capital l so this is the formula and if you want to know delta l is what delta is basically l dash minus l new length l dash is the new length l dash is the new length all right and see meter by meter they'll also cancel each other this also you can remember meter meter the si unit will also cancel each other fine so delta l by l is the formula for longitudinal strain next you have volumetric strain and then you have the shearing strain uh these two i'll do it later first you write this down then those two i'll do
done class or still writing? Yes, class done. Noha, Alina. Okay, okay. Khadija and Noha have completed. So since others are not answering, I'm assuming you all have completed. At least respond. Otherwise, I'll have to call out your names. You're not able to unmute, Mariam. Others, are you? People? Yes, ma'am. No, no, it's no, I can. Uh, yes, so this was the longitudinal strain. This is an easy lesson. You all will be do. You all will be able to complete it. You should just remember the concept. In with the basics, we have started the changes that are occurring now because of all the changes, stresses are produced because of all the changes, strains are produced. Now we'll see stress and strain relation also later. Now volumetric strain is what deforming force is producing the change in the volume. The change that is being produced is the change in the volume. That's it. So, a uh, volume metric strain change in dimension by original dimension we have studied. So, suppose there's a sphere with original volume V. Now, it's new volume. It has shrunk and its new volume is V dash. So, the change in volume that has occurred, the change in the entire volume is delta V. So, change in dimension by original dimension. Change in the dimensions by original dimension. What is the dimension here? Volume. So, change in volume, that is delta V by original volume, that is V. This is it. And here also you will see meter cube by meter cube, they'll cancel each other. Last one. Shearing strain. Now, shearing strain has a slight, slight derivation, very small, easy derivation. See, this I have told you a lot of times. The best example for this that I found, find is the textbook. Suppose if you have a textbook, suppose uh, this, is a, this is a book and if you try to shift the upper surface. For books, you will notice that the upper surface will shift. Not the thin books on which you are writing, the thick reference books, especially of your class 11th and 12th, you have those very thick reference books. So it tilts. If it is like this, it will be like this. Upper surface will tilt. So there is an angle formed over here. Original length was in. The shift that has occurred is delta. Now, see, if we look in this triangle, suppose this is A, B, C. This side is C. So, in triangle A, B, C, I am writing tan theta. Tan theta will be perpendicular upon base. So, the perpendicular here is B, C. Here, the perpendicular is B, C. Divided by, this is A, B. A, B is the base. All right. So tan theta, what is BC? BC is delta L. What is AB? AB is L, that is the original length. Now see, whenever you have a very small angle, small angle means uh, not more than 15 degrees, 7 degrees, 6 degree, 5 degree, 4 degree, these angles, if you have. So these are considered to be small angles. Now for small angles, you have small variations also. So theta is almost equal to tan theta or sine theta. So here also, what can I do? I can write this tan theta almost equal to theta. So ultimately, when I equate both of these together, so I will get C. Theta will be equal to delta L divided by L. This theta was not the shift that was produced, the change that was occurring here. So this, the formula is exactly similar to longitudinal one, but derivation is shorter. Usually you do not get this derivation in your exam. This is not very important at the last. It's very easy. You can just keep it in your mind and that's enough. While revision, you can see. It is not very important. If it will come, it will come in your two marks only. Two mark a question with addition question. Define strain, define Hooke's law, something, something else. All right. Sure. So this is shearing strain. Basically, we have taken this triangle. This was point A, this was B, this was C. 
So this was the change delta L. This was original length L and this theta. So here we have we had applied perpendicular divided by the base over here. All right. Perpendicular divided by the base. So these are the two types more uh, than, other than the longitudinal. So total three types. Write down these also. Then we will see their relation.
okay class the next topic is hooke's law this is a very important law and this comes to write separately though the marks and weightage will be very less for this law but this is important out of all the things that we have studied see you have to understand a term that is known as elastic limit what is meant by elastic limit is that when i when i told you know in the first class that if you stretch a body and if you remove the deforming force they'll be back to their shape and size this is valid for elastic bodies but see every elastic body also has a limit that if that limit is exceeded by the de deforming force suppose there is a rod fine there is a steel rod if i put a mass if i hang a mass the rod will elongate when i remove the mass the rod will become uh, back to its original shape and size okay but suppose if i am putting 5 kg mass the steel wire is becoming back to its original shape and size but if in that same steel wire if i am attaching 100 kg weight and it has elongated so much and then i am remo removing that 100 kg mass and then i am expecting that this is a steel wire it is an elastic body it should be back to its original shape and size is it possible no because excessive force has been applied has been applied excess of the force so every body that's why every body has its set limit that if it if it is exceeded then it can never return it will become plastic so elastic bodies after a certain elastic limit can become plastic if they are overweighted if they are hung with a lot of mass lot of weight all right so maximum stress from which an elastic body will recover its original state after removal of deforming force is called elastic limit elastic limit this is the maximum value once this value is achieved the bodies can return back to their original shape and size but if it is crossed the bodies will not return to their original shape and size so suppose this is a rod force f has been applied and because of the deforming force there is this displacement this extension that is produced fine this is the extension the elongation in the length is x so hooke's law basically says that that if this elastic limit is not crossed in no, under normal conditions when normal forces are applied when normal deforming forces are applied when normal kgs of masses are hung on the free ends then this force is directly proportional to this extension produced the force applied force is directly proportional to the extension you can say you can say elongation extension or elongation produced so force is directly proportional to the displacement displacement elongation extension until the elastic limit is not exceeded provided the elastic limit is not exceeded the extension produced in the wire is directly proportional to the applied force now one more thing this is hooke's law now in terms of stress and strain what happens this is in terms of force and the ex extension produced what about the stress and strain that we have studied so see again the same thing if these elastic limits are not crossed by the body then both are directly proportional to each other stress is proportional to strain also all right so stress is directly proportional to strain stress is directly proportional to strain if elastic limits of the body is not crossed all right now see i have told you several times that in mathematics whenever you have to remove the proportionality sign we put an equal to with a constant so if i bring this strain in the denominator i'll have stress divided by strain is equal to a constant here the constant is known as modulus of elasticity modulus of elasticity fine so now see what is modulus of elasticity it's the ratio of stress and strain now class there are different types of stresses there are different types of strains so there won't be a single type of modulus of elasticity correct class 
So modulus of elasticity is also of three types. One because of change in length, which we call and which is the most common, which is very important, that is Young's modulus of elasticity. You have change in volume, that is bulk modulus of elasticity and change in shape, that is modulus of rigidity. So three types of deformations produced, three types of stresses in your system, three types of strain in your system. Their ratio, three types of moduli of elasticity in your system. So what is moduli of elasticity? It's the basically the ratio of stress and strain. It can be Young's modulus, bulk modulus or any other. Now, uh, one, one, just one last thing before you all can write it down, the graph. Stress divided by strain is giving you moduli of elasticity. Means if I have this graph, theta is the angle that is being formed. I know stress is directly proportional to strain, right? So stress divided by strain will be, will give me the slope of the graph. Here is it stress by strain. Look in the first graph. This is strain by stress, right? So this will be 1 by E. This graph, if you look here, look at this graph. Oh, you do not have stress versus strain graph. Two graphs are present. First one is strain versus stress. Look at the second graph. Second graph is stress versus strain. Two types of graphs are present. Stress versus strain and strain versus stress. So if you have stress directly proportional to strain, if stress is directly proportional to strain, then stress divided by strain will give you tan theta. Like look at the second graph first. Stress divided by strain will give me tan theta, which is the moduli of elasticity. But here in this case, this is strain over stress. That will give me 1 over tan theta, which is equal to 1 by modular elasticity. Why am I telling you to do both the cases? Because both of these cases, you have to figure out which one graph is given in the exam. Understood? Which exam, which graph is given to you in the exam? Is it strain versus stress? Is it stress versus strain? So if by chance this graph is given, strain versus stress, do not write these things. Inverse it. 1 by modular elasticity will be given to you. First, tell me this graphical concept is clear to all of you because out of all the things, I think this was just one tricky part to remember. The rest of the things were just formula. Clear or not? Yes or no? Do you want me to repeat any part till now? The deformations produced, elasticity, stress, strain, Hooke's law. Clear? Mariam Nuha, at least it's clear to two students, Mariam and Nuha. So it's unclear to Lina, Hudeja, and Khadija. What are your doubts? Lina, Khadija, Hudeja, what you have not understood? Yes, Lina. Write it down. Okay, clear to Khudaija. So Khadija and Lina are, have still not responded. Okay, start writing from here.
Okay, class. So what is Young's modulus? Young's modulus is also a modular of elasticity. Means it's the ratio of stress and strain. So now the type of stress and the type of strain will define which type of moduli of elasticity you have. In Young's modulus, you have the normal stress, the first one which we had studied, divided by the which type of strain? Again, the same longitudinal strain. Longitudinal strain. So Young's modulus is normal strain by longitudinal. What was normal stress? I'm again repeating. Normal stress was force per unit area. And what about the longitudinal strain? We have just studied change in length by original length. So Young's modulus, their ratio. Young's modulus will be force upon area. This is the longitudinal stress, normal stress by long longitudinal strain so we can write this as f l by a delta l this is the formula what is meant by each term y is the young's modulus f is the force l is the Original length, delta L is the change in length, A is the area of cross section. Now see, since we know strain will always be unitless, so what will be the SI unit of it? Whatever is the SI unit of stress will be the SI unit of this. What was the SI unit of stress? Pascals or Newton per meter square. Pascals or Newton per meter square. We will be using Pascals more commonly. Write this down. 